What does 10X mean to you? I think 10X is not just for business, it's for your life. You have to change. I stopped drinking because you said something about drinking. I don't drink anymore, I haven't drank in a long time. Yeah. You're constantly pivoting, shifting, figuring things out, creating. You have highs and lows. You have good days and bad days. They'll never see me at a lower ticket. I've always made my investment back and then some. If you have a good team, you gotta trust the team is doing what they were hired to do. And if they're not, then you need to rehire. I think team is, is everything. Okay, you ready? Hello and welcome to the Elena Cardone Show. We are a woman empowerment show. Today I have Candace Barr, who is the CEO of Lux Media, and I've met her several times, dating back all the way back to the Los Angeles days. And I wanted to pick your mind about media, how it how important is media and marketing and promotion? And, and then we can just kind of deep dive into your life, into how you got here, and some, and some successes and challenges you've had along the way. So let's just dive right in, shall we? I'm really excited to be here. This is a great setup. Thank you for having me. And yeah, we've done a lot of cool things together. Yeah, we have, years. right? Yes, yeah. we have. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe our magazine was one of the first covers you were on several years oh, ago. Oh, it sure was. Okay. <laughs> and it's and you have a beautiful magazine Thank and that you. was an amazing shoe with a great photographer. Oh, the best. But yes. the best. <laughs> so so that was good. I was I was happy with that one. I was like, make me look like this. <laughs> always every, every time. Yes. Always. <laughs> I framed it. It was in my office for a number of years. I, saw I, that. I moved offices, so I was it, very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. It was it's okay. Good. You know, let's just briefly warm people up. Yeah, here and tell them, tell us, like, how did, how was your childhood? How did you grow up? Like, yeah, uh, were you normal? Were you not normal? I don't know if I was ever normal. I'm definitely not normal now. That's for sure. I don't think any entrepreneurs normal by any stretch of the imagination uh, that's that's what makes you an entrepreneur I think but uh, I grew up in New Hampshire I was born and raised in New Hampshire which no one's from New Hampshire and I made my way out to Los Angeles when I was 17 and me too oh I was 17 I actually I did read that in your book I don't think it ever came up though okay you were 17 doing, by 17. yourself how do you why how why why do you so there? here's you know I figured out the why recently and it's oh. interesting like I wanted to leave New Hampshire as soon as far back as I the second I could I I did and Why? so I just knew there was something bigger and better okay I just knew it like okay. I'm like I don't I nothing against New Hampshire people in New Hampshire are great um and if you live there that's fine uh it just wasn't for me and I knew there was something bigger and better I didn't know what I didn't know where I didn't know how I didn't know anything but I knew it was something was out there so you know kind of a, kind of an interesting kid I was I remember going to the library when I was really young and just taking out tons and tons of books on different countries how to speak different languages mm. like, like nobody else was doing i'm from a very so small was doing that i'm from a very small town nobody's i was going to like so you didn't do drugs ah <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh she was one of those that are no nope. real deal facts i wouldn't say, i would definitely not hardcore and oh. like that's later in life as well oh, okay. um nothing to really to consider or talk about but that yeah um, but I remember like going a couple times over and getting like the Italian Vogue because I wanted the Italian Vogue. And like I just knew there was a better life out there. And my life was good. Very middle class family. Um, and what did the Italian Vogue represent to you? Uh, just I just wanted something more fabulous. I'm like I remember watching TV and like watching different movies and like the runways and like just a bigger fabulous life I'm like I need to have that that's what needs to go on and now that you've been around that and been exposed mm -hmm. to that well, how does that seem to you now it does that well, seem like the fabulous real life or what sometimes is I think sometimes you still look at things and you're you know you're at nice hotels or different countries and you're having your coffee and you're you know doing the thing of what you're watching and you're sometimes you are like I'm living the life that I wanted but I think after a while, after you're in it for so long, it's second nature and it, it's your life. Like it's your norm. It becomes your norm. Mm -hmm. So what was once a goal is now the norm. Mm -hmm. But I'm, what was the goal? 
the goal was just to create something bigger, better, better. Like it, mm-hmm. my goal was always, and you asked me why I moved to LA. Mm-hmm. I moved to LA because I wanted to be challenged. I remember being so bored and so tired of being in New Hampshire. I, like I said, I got the second I could. And I had family in New York and I wanted to go somewhere where I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any family. We were middle class. We, you know, definitely did. We weren't suffering, but like the idea was if you leave your leave home and we support you uh, energetically, but we're not, there was no support financially or any other type of way whatsoever. So if you leave, you leave. Mm. Um, And so that's, I knew that. And that's what I did. I'm like, you know what, if I'm going to have a challenge, let's really have a challenge here. So I thought I want to get as far away from New Hampshire as possible while still being in the United States and go to a city. So that's why L.A. was that. So you, it, you didn't want to be an actress or I model. did not go to L.A. to be an actress or model. No, Interesting. no, I just I didn't know. I re- always said I didn't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to do something. And I know my life means something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do come from an entrepreneur family. Yeah. So uh, my father was an entrepreneur. He had several different businesses. My mother was an entrepreneur. Um, they divorced when I was really young. My great grandparents who I knew who helped raise me were entrepreneurs. Everyone was an entrepreneur in different industries, different businesses, but I always saw it was the biggest thing you learned from them growing up in the entrepreneurial family. Uh, you got to hustle. And if you want something, you got to get it yourself. Don't wait around for anyone to hand it to you and you can do whatever you want. You got to earn it. After middle school and high school, my dad owned a music store in town. So I'd go to the music store and help him do inventory, deal with the money, uh, watch him do sales, very good at sales, and just connecting with people and knowing how to do that. So that was a lot for my father. How important is the value of sales? Sales is very important. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to be in business, you have to know sales. <laughs> is, it, but, is it something anyone can learn or is it, are you born with it? I think, so this is my take on entrepreneurship. I and mean, I've said it throughout the years. I don't believe that entrepreneurs can be made. I think you're born an entrepreneur. Even if you have other jobs before you uh, realize you're an entrepreneur, if you're someone who's constantly quitting jobs or getting fired from jobs, you're probably an entrepreneur because it's hard to tell you what to do. You may know how to do it better and authorities don't want to hear, you know, someone below them telling them how to do things better. So I think if you're someone getting constantly quitting or fired or just being really unsatisfied with what you're doing, you're probably an entrepreneur. You just don't know it yet. But it, entrepreneurship is a fire within. I don't think you can be taught to have a fire. You can be taught different tricks, tools, techniques. But that fire within that keeps you going, the figure it out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, just getting what you need to get, get, getting what you want to get, no matter what, that's an entrepreneur. Oh. Um. And do you consider yourself like a good entrepreneur? I would say so. Yeah. Like yeah. I've been in business for a long time. I I heard a statistic recently. I was like, oh, that's interesting. People who are not true entrepreneurs only last in business three years. So we've been mm-hmm. in business. I've been doing this for 21 years. So, so yeah. I've learned a few things. I've learned a lot of, you learn constantly are learning. You're constantly pivoting, shifting, figuring things out, creating. You have highs and lows. You have good days and bad days. You are uh, hiring. You're firing. You are figuring it out. You are committing and figuring out the rest yes. later. Yeah, same thing. Well, you've been around. And the thing that I admire you is you've been in business for 21 years, and yet you still come to events, yes. 10X Ladies, yes. you've come to 10X Growth Con, you've come to um, sales and marketing training workshops yes. I saw you at. where I forget. We were in Vegas or somewhere. I did uh, see you in Vegas. Yeah, but I think it was at uh, GrowthCon. Okay, I think, yeah. but, but then you were. I've done a lot of. I've done a lot of. Part- that, that, that's what I, yeah. I like about you is that you. And I'm doing the same thing, by the way. Yeah. Like people look and think when you when you hit a certain level, you don't need to train anymore, and I think that's where a lot of people fall off and only cap out at being mediocre or good at best yeah i i don't like it i don't resonate with people who think they know everything once you think you know everything you've your business will die you've died out um you have to keep growing expanding you have to keep learning there you don't know everything i don't i don't know everything i don't even want to know everything i don't want to know everything i want to be able to constantly learn i want people to teach me i want i want to be able to i want to trust other people people. on my team yes that know more than me to like 
lead me in that direction. Yes. That's what a team is for. Yeah. Like th there are certain things in my company that I don't do and I don't know how to do it. I don't need to know how to do it. There's people for that. It's like, can you just learn how to turn your <laughs> computer on for God's sake? <laughs> Um, okay, so what does it mean, like, you're in this 10x environment? Not yeah. not everyone that I have on the show, by the way, is in the 10x oh, environment. Oh, okay. Like it's, like, it's random. Okay. But you, I consider, it, are in the 10x environment, so you can speak on this. What does 10x mean to you, especially in equation to your entrepreneurial sales and marketing um, no, know-how? Well, I want to say, I think 10x is not just for business it's for your life it, you can't i don't believe you can accelerate your business and not accelerate your life you have to change and that means everything has to change i went to your first women's conference a few years back you said something at the conference that hit me so hard i changed that day like i stopped drinking because you said something about drinking i don't drink anymore i haven't drank in a long time Woo! yeah because of that so if you want to change, you can change. It takes someone saying something, just a sentence to change that thing that also affects all the other stuff. But I can't hear people complaining. If you're doing the same thing over and over again, we don't need to be around each other because this train is moving quick. This is a rocket ship. And you need to be around other rocket ships. Mm, I agree. Yeah. So, okay. I love that. Now take us back to where it was one of the biggest challenges that you did have on mm. this journey to mm -hmm. where you are now. Mm -hmm. And how did you handle it? What was it and how did you handle it? Oh man, I've had, a, I've had a lot of challenges. The first major challenge, and then this was years ago, probably 10 plus years ago when I was getting divorced my first ex-husband. And I had left and I knew if I left, um, I would have no money at all. Mm, how scary was that? Very scary. And I was like, well, I can stay and be incredibly unhappy in the situation or I can leave and figure it out. And, you know, being much younger back then, I, I left and figured it out. And it was it was scary. It was, you know, I call it baby daring it. You put one foot in front of the baby, other. What? Baby daring it. You Dear, know, baby, baby dares dear, get like, born and they're. Oh, they're a little wobbly, but they're walking, but okay. they're still walking. So you're a little wobbly, but you're still going forward anyway. Mm -hmm. That was really challenging. I'm not because that was not easy. I, I left with my car and I left sixty dollars in my bank account. And that was that was what I had, and there was no calling back home for help. So you figure it out. So what did you do? You slept in your car that night? No, I went to a friend's I, house. I went to a friend's house. On a friend. <laughs> went to a friend's house. I stayed on his couch for a few months, and then I built business and I kept going and never looked back yeah how grateful are you oh I always bet on myself I always bet on myself you, if you can trust anyone you should be able to trust yourself has anyone beat you down to where you didn't trust yourself I'm sure there were times that you didn't feel as courageous you don't feel as confident co thank you Start confident in yourself mm -hmm. but you have to think back to your life. Like you've been through so many things. You've been through th so many challenges. You're still here. The mm -hmm. fact that you're still here mm -hmm. tells me you can keep going. Mm -hmm. You can keep going. And I know very difficult things, very difficult things have happened to me. Um, and very difficult things have happened to a lot of other entrepreneurs. If, you know, someone told me the defin definition of entrepreneur once, and I'll never forget it because it was the best definition I ever heard in my life. Mm. And he said, the definition of entrepreneur is the bearer of risk. So, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for people who give up quickly. It's not for people who need others to validate them. Or instantaneous results. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a journey. This is a journey. This is a journey. It's a continuous journey. So you're going to go through a lot of stuff. I had someone recently, he started a business. <laughs> I have to exhale, like, oh, yeah. You're going to go through a lot, a lot of mistakes. You're going to go through a lot of uphill battles. As, as you know, the higher you go, the more stuff you go through. Oh, God. And I'm sure whatever things you guys go through, even now, uh, you're like, how are we going to deal with this? But you figure it out. And I grow. Yeah. And I expand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just try to love and not take it out on the people around me. Mm. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I make a mistake mm. and where I could have had patience or kindness, I, you know, but there's a lot going on up yes. here. There's a lot going on that this person doesn't know about 75% of it. This person doesn't know about 90% of it. Yeah. 
so they could make a judgment. Yeah. This chick is, you know, but they don't know the whole picture. Yeah. And not that that is an excuse either to do a, a verbal impatience with somebody. That, I'm not saying well, it's, 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 it's you're definitely human, not an excuse, you're human, but my going to happen and you're going to snap. And I feel, <laughs> I can feel the stress just like sometimes just yeah. like crunching right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. My shoulders, I get massages a lot and not not because I'm spoiled, because I, I need them. I feel the, I feel the same. And too. I'm like, <gasps> you would assume I've never done a massage in me my too. life. But she asks me that all the time. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't get them all the time, but I had one recently. Yeah. She's like, this is insane. Yes. Okay. So on that note, how do you feel about work life balance? I don't believe in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Explain that answer. I don't even know. I don't really know who uh, made that up, but I don't. I think it was to torture people like you and I, because when you hear work-life balance don't you feel like everything's supposed to be perfect i don't and no, i actually don't think an entrepreneur made that sentence up because if it was a true entrepreneur in my mind <laughs> they would know never to say that because that's not a true experience in my mind right. so um it, i don't know it might be for somebody but it's, i don't you do there's seasons in your business there's seasons in your life and sometimes work is going to take the forefront and sometimes family will take you, you know the you there's hiring out, there's help for things. You know, if you want to grow, you need to hire out not only in business, but also maybe for your family. You might need a nanny. You might need the gardener. You might need other things. Um, and everything needs your attention. There's only one of you. Right. So everything needs your attention. And sometimes you're going to give 100%. Sometimes you get 50%. You're going to give what you can give because there's only so much you can do. However, we are able to do a lot. We're able to do a lot more than people want to say we can do. As the higher you go, the more you can handle, but it doesn't mean you necessarily always want to. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And and then I, I've learned to be at peace with that question because I go, okay, work-life balance. Like we we're talking about the nerves. Like yeah. the balance part of it is I'm going to make the time to have a massage. Well, And even when I have massages, yes. I will tell you, I have such a thing. Yeah that most of the time I can't even enjoy them because I feel gluttonous. I feel like I feel like I should be either being with my kids at this time or my husband or, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Or I should be doing some yeah. other work piece yeah. or it's very difficult this for me. This is how I look at it. This might help you. Yeah. This is how I look at it. I look at it as a car with maintenance. So you put in the oil, you change the tires, whatever's wrong, you fix the thing, or you try to prevent it before it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to prevent it before, it, like I get mm -hmm. acupuncture, I get cupping, I get massages. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's, I like it. It does feel good, but I do it more to maintain this thing, mm -hmm. to run this thing. Mm. I like that. That's good. So that might help. That does help. Yeah. I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to go schedule my <laughs> massage when we're done with this show. <laughs> And you know, you, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time and you're a mother and you're a wife and you r help run the company and like you're doing all these different things. So I'm sure you have help for that. Oh, yeah. But also uh, that's, that was my next question. Unless I just interrupted you. What was it? My next question was how important is the team? Oh, team is everything. I don't know. I know. Listen, I know what I know. I know a certain skill set that is my genius and everything else I don't know. And I don't want to know. I don't need to know that. I'm happy to learn things. But I, I know my genius and I know my lane. And I think if you stay in your lane and stop trying to get in everyone else's lane and micromanage everything, if you have a good team, you got to trust the team is doing what they were hired to do. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, then you need to rehire. I think team is is everything. And, and the more that, you know, I personally want to accomplish – I realize I if if I want to personally accomplish more, I need to be more of a serve and help others achieve what they want. Mm. And that's what I think is the secret formula to getting the mutual. Mm. Uh, of course, the intentions of the purpose have to be on everyone's forefront. But that's where I'm learning now to shift from you just help me to how can I also help you? Yeah. And how can we then go help others? And and I couldn't do that alone. Like I just can't do it alone. Yeah. Would you consider yourself an authority in what you're teaching and what you're doing in business? 
I'm going to say no to that specific question because in business, I would say the authority is Grant because mm-hmm. he's built a business mm-hmm. and he's built he has physically built the entire thing. I support it. I'm not downgrading myself, but he is the authority in sales and marketing and scaling. Brandon Dawson, our partner at Cardone Venture, Ventures, is the authority. He's 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 scaled multiple companies and helped them exit, and and they really understand things on a level I am not authorized to speak on. Mm. I am using this year. As my age of learning, everyone in this organization around me knows I'm going through our Cardone Ventures program. I've gone through grants programs. I am and and I'm learning that to build up my division in the 10x ladies empire. Mm -hmm. So in the 10x ladies empire, I am not teaching technical business aspects. What I'm the authority, if you want to call it that. Yeah on is what I, it, which is my wheelhouse, which is that support role, which is knowing the roles and the relationships and how to get cohesive and the mindset of uh, my, my mindset is what Grant will tell you really elevated his game. So what I bring and speak upon, I'll never say I'm really the authority, but my stats would show and indicate and prove mm. that they can't be disputed in mm. my area and my lane. Mm. My women empowerment, I build women so they can build their empires. Mm-hmm. I feel like I do have more authority in that area than the self-proclaimed Instagram yeah. because of the stats that I have. Yes, But I'm not going to go tell anyone how to build a business from the ground up and how to create a startup to $100 million because I personally haven't done it. Yeah. My husband's done it. Car- Brandon's done it. The people around me have done it. But I haven't done it. Yeah. So I'm not going to go talk about it. I'm going to be a conduit to say, hey, you might find me because of what I speak about, but then I'm going to funnel you over to the expert. Yeah. So what about you? Do you think you're an expert in what you talk about? You know, I'd say I'm pretty good. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I like the word authority. And I don't know if I like seeing people, especially on social media, uh, you know, taking that title and like really taking that stance. And uh, what makes you what makes you that authority? I think the results, I guess, would make you that authority in that thing. Yeah, um, that's how I. But I don't believe, even if I was in, even if I was doing this for fifty years, a hundred years, I don't know if I'd ever give my say that I am, or you'll ever hear me say that I am, because I, uh, I, I would say we're very good at what we do. That's right. I'm happy with the stats. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm happy with the stats. Um, what gives me authority or credit or is, you know, I've been in a 20 year marriage. I have two kids that are fun, freaking phenomenal. Yeah. I've created a business that's, you know, approaching the five million dollar mark. I want to take it to 10 million. Amazing. I'm building that myself. Yeah. Um, I have experience of the work life balance. How do you do it all? You know? Yeah. Do you believe in that? So the whole, well, I'm, I've been grappling with it for years and, and changing my mind about it because I see it. And I see that question being presented in two different ways. Mm. So depending on how you interpret it at the receipt point is going to be different. Mm. Sometimes I interpret it as, work-life balance, assuming that life is actually this attainable, happy, cohesive place where there's no, where everything is just harmonious and perfect, yet you're operating at those levels. Like, I'm not your girl for that. Like, go get that someplace else. I've come to realize that my life has a lot of stuff going on. My life is more of a juggling act. Now, taken in that my life is, will will probably never look like that. I don't know. Mm. Maybe if I'm 70 or 60 or 65 or even next week, if I figure this piece out, I'll talk about it and I'll take a hard stand on it. I just am not the person to go to with that because I haven't figured that piece out yet. So for me, it doesn't feel realistic. 
But the other piece of that is I do look at the stress in the neck. And so if you think of work-life balance, I think, okay, balance part is scheduling the massage, taking the IV, making sure you do your own personal workouts and all the stuff that make you feel good. That's balance part. Balance part. The kids know that they have to uh, take a back seat on certain circumstances for the greater good of everybody being helped. They're they're in on that team. Yeah. Then I have to balance it by giving them, okay, we do this so every year we can take, well, we can take a two-week trip in the south of France on a yacht where it's just us and nobody else and where we can fly private. Like that's that's the payoff and those are the rewards for this other thing that isn't, perfect all the time or whatever yeah so that if you look at the balance part of that then yes i agree with work by life balance if you interpret it the other way i completely disagree let me ask you this so how did this turn how did you flip the switch <laughs> on me i'm so used to interviewing <laughs> you little flipper i do want to ask you this um so you had asked me earlier like when you're what you wanted when you were younger and you got it now that we're older and you got the life, I, I got, you know, got the life that you wanted. So now when you're on the private jets and you're on the boat in Europe and you're doing all these fabulous things, do you ever sit and think back like this, like I'm getting what I want? Yes, I do. And it's surreal and it's amazing. And I feel be like, yeah, there's like bucket list items and the yacht trip needs to be on everyone's bucket yeah. list item because it's just a, it's just an incredible incredible experience Europe from a yacht with people bringing you stuff and carrying your bags and treating you so you know amazing yes. and and it's and 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 then you're with your kids and you're in the in the jet skis and it's it is beautiful and you're like this is surreal like why can't you have this why do people say this is wrong to have why can't you experience this much joy and happiness However, the very next day, an instance will blow up and a circumstance happens where I have to handle it. So I'm handling life, but in a beautiful location. Yeah. So it's never perfect. It doesn't get easier. It's just, you know. It just looks different. It just looks different. And I'd rather experience those blow ups on a beautiful yacht, being able to eat beautiful croissants yes. and drinking decaf cappuccinos than handling those blow-ups um, in, um, you know, in, in the basement of my parents' dingy garage. Did you ever think, I don't... Here you go again. <laughs> I'm going to flip it around. What do you think? You can't do this. <laughs> do, people, do people say and accuse you, and I don't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at you if they did, but do they accuse you of being controlling? Um, no. No? No. Well, they don't tell. Well, what do you they think of control? They don't tell me. What do you think of control? Am I being controlling? No, 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 I'm, no, no, no. I'm super. Inqui- I'm super inquisitive. I love it. Wait, what do you think of the word control? What does that mean? Overbearing, taking over. Okay, that's not how I see control. What is control? I see only good control or bad control. Interesting. Good control is I drive my car down the road. Okay. Bad control is the car drives me into a tree. Yes. Bad control, good control. Yeah. I don't know if I'm doing, I don't think I'm doing. I don't think bad. I'm just super inquisitive. Yeah. I think good control is control. Like I love control. Hmm. I want more control. And the more knowledge I have and the more responsibility I can take for something, the more control I have over it. I like to be more, I like to be in flow. Oh, okay. Well, explain flow because I explained my version of control. Me is kind of like. I don't leave things up to circumstance. I don't tell me flow. Tell me flow. I have a vision and I know where we're going and we will get there. But I like to be in flow stating like, this is what I want. This is where we're going. Sometimes I'm like, I I give up the reins to get there and we get there. But would you give up the steering wheel and trust the car is going to get you there? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. (laughs) If I was going to a tree. Or ditch. Where are we going? <laughs> uh, I don't like a, I'm not getting in a note to self. Do not get in a car with this chick. She goes with the flow. We'll see, we'll see She's like, happens. let's see what, let's I'm, see what happens. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be there. 
Oh my God. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm just used to. It. No, I love this interview. I love that you switched it. I love that you have power. Oh, I'm, I'm inquisitive. I'm, I'm very love... interested in what other people have to say. Me too. Okay. I, I am too. Okay. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Which is why I wanted to do this show because, <laughs> you know, greedily, I want to hear other people. That's why you probably knew I was going to ask the challenge question. I have a lot of challenges. I deal with them differently. I like to hear how other people deal with challenges. I like to hear other people's successful actions. I like to know what people think about control or this or that. I like to hear different viewpoints mm -hmm. because I don't want to be stuck on my viewpoint and only know what I know, yeah. which, which brings us back to the beginning of this conversation, yes. which is, you know, we're always evolving yeah. and learning and growing and, and not being stagnant. So this is a way for me to like get out of the bubble a little bit. Yeah. I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and discuss different things and see if I can shift the viewpoint or have a new one yes. that then leads me to more inspiration. Okay. Final note. You can answer one or both of these questions. Okay. One is, what is your most successful action? Okay. And two is, what advice do you have for women? One or both. Either one, one, either, or both. I can answer both. Okay, go. So my most successful action, I mean, I'm a, basically, you can call me PR or you can call me a professional networker, whatever you want to call it. However, my most successful action throughout my whole career and will continue to be, it's tried and true, is positioning myself in the right rooms with the right people. I mean, that's networking 101. And the also on top of that is if there is a ticket, whatever the higher ticket is, whatever the higher amount is to pay for the thing that you want to go to, purchase the higher thing and figure out if you can't purchase it, figure out a way to get it because that's really where you need to be. You can change your whole business and your whole life in seconds by being in the right room with the right people. Ooh, so I think I know your answer to this. I, I'm going one more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's pretend like there's a silent auction item here. Mm -hmm. You can pay to be with the person or you can pay to have a really fun experience. Which do you pick? The person. I knew person. you were going to say that. That's an awesome. Um, and I will also shout out to your events. Every time, I, every time I go to her events or Cardone events or 10X events or whatever it is, I will always get the higher ticket. You'll never see me at a lower ticket. And... I've always, because I know how to do it, I've always made my investment back and then some. Wow. So networking at a higher level immediately does make sense. Um, going to something at a lower level, yes, you're there for the information and the knowledge and you might get something good out of it, but you're really there for the networking. Um, so you might as well network well. Um. The second uh, question you asked me is what advice would I give women? There's so much to say. Uh, huge female entrepreneur advocate here. And I would what I would say is keep your prices high. Don't negotiate your prices ever. There's no negotiation, no discounts. Don't water yourself down. And also keep yourself respectful. I mm -hmm. think um, you did actually just did a post today, I think on Instagram, somewhere in social media, and I loved it. And it's about uh, dressing. And what I've been seeing in the entrepreneur space, especially female entrepreneurs, it's like, you know, you're, you're, everything's hanging out. Everything's hanging out. And we work so hard to get respect and to be respected in this space. And so we don't want to be put back 20, 30 years. You know, there's a lot of us trying to move forward in a respectful, positive way. And I think you don't, not I think, you don't have to, uh, you know, show off everything to close sales. Bam! <laughs> that was super great advice. Totally helped me in uh, some things and, and ways I'm going to approach some, some situations. Is that talking about Oh, sure. Because you have your time. Last talk, words. Oh, yes. Let's talk about your book. So I am really excited. This came out. We it launched in November. And it's called Believing Before Seeing, Believing to Existence. And yes, when you own a business, you're putting in a lot of action. And you have a lot of visions. And you have the team to help you and all these things. But I think the first and foremost, as an entrepreneur, 
not only you believing in yourself and believing in the vision and believing in all that, you have to take the steps to the first steps to even do that. So you have to believe in the unseen at that moment. And as you're growing, there's constantly visions and ideas that you want to see come to fruition that you may not have even seen before anyone else do, but having the courage to do it. If I believe if the mm -hmm. thought is given mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. then it's yours to take and move forward with. Mm -hmm. And if you don't move forward with it, it's going to be given to someone else. Like how mm -hmm. many times, it's in the book, how many times have you uh, thought of a patent or thought of an invention? And you'd, it'd be a great invention and you didn't move forward with it. And somebody else did years later. You're like, oh, I thought of that years ago. That's because it was given to someone else. Mm, I hate when that <laughs> Damn it. I want the sticky note <laughs> patent back. That was mine. And the paper clip too. So it's just believing in yourself, believing I got the universe, God, whatever you believe in, you can believe in that. Believe, just belief is the first steps. If you can just believe that it can be done, it can be done. That's how everything we see right now has been created. Million. Yeah. Super, super great. Make sure you follow and, and like Candace. Um, what, do you go by Candace Barr? Yep, Candace, Candace Barr, Barr yes. on all socials, right? And check out her book, Believing thank Before Seeing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. This was a really fun episode. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I loved the banter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were watching the Elena Cardone show. As always, bringing it to you.